Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Mm-hmm. Well, I say all the, the TV news is just a bunch of propaganda. It's really owned by um, the New World Order, is what we call them. And, yeah. uh, you know, so I think where we're getting the real news uh, is on the alternative news across the Internet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that uh, this Internet has been a huge blessing. Yeah, there's still some yeah. propagandists who use the Internet, too, but uh, but that's where you're going to get the truth. And uh, Susan, I, I have a friend who's uh, been on the line with us, and before, I want you to start from the beginning with your whole story, um, but first I'd like to bring Jose Colazo on because I know that he wanted to talk to you. Uh, he's a good friend, and uh, he does yeah. a lot of work in uh, fmri technology so uh jose colazo welcome to late night in the midlands hello michael hello susan how are you Hi. hey there good yeah. how's everybody doing we're good. doing how great good thank you uh very interesting your 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 you know i give you credit for everything that that you went through for our country and and I'm, I'm very. Uh, I read your book and. It was, Thank you. It has a lot of information of things that were going on that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, it's it's a it's a frightening kind of story, I think. Um, and one of the things that I want to say is that, and and, and please, this this is like a reverse racism thing. Don't don't get this the wrong way. Um, This kind of thing happens to African-Americans and Hispanics all the time. What was extraordinary was that it happened to a white, blonde woman. But I was the second non-Arab American ever indicted on the Patriot Act. The Arabs are getting hit with this a lot. And the abuses of women at Carswell Prison, if I can digress for a minute, uh, what they do to to black women and Hispanic women are so ugly and hideous, and it's just de rigueur that they're not supposed to stand up and fight back. And the kind of women that they're attacking are not, um, are are, are tend to be mostly middle class women. And they're like, these these idiots at Carswell Prison, uh, on on Carswell Air Force Base, uh, will say to women, you know, you're you're supposed to be in the ghetto. You're not supposed to be a middle class woman. There, there was there was one woman who was a piano teacher, a black woman, and they asked her, "Well, you know, you're black. I'm telling you the truth now. This is going to hurt. If there's anybody who's listening to this who, who's like who's afraid of having racial conversations, this will upset you. But this is this is about race." Um, they they said to her uh, she's a black piano teacher she went to, graduated from Howard University very strong capable woman very cap- competent and they said uh, well of course you're black so you teach jazz right and she said yes I teach jazz I also teach Mozart and Chopin and you know all the other classical music and they said well uh, you think you're capable of that. And she said, well, of course. Wow. wow, yeah. You think you're capable of that, of teaching Mozart? Sure. Chopin, yes. And they said, well, you teach black children this? Do you think black children can learn this? And they're like, and she's like, well, of course they can. And I also teach white children. You know, I don't discriminate. I teach all children. Oh, my heavens. A black woman teaching white children Mozart? They, when it, this went, it went to a higher level of incompetence. And then the, the kicker. You teach them in the white children's homes. They were very worried that a black woman was teaching a white child, Mozart. And so they're like, well, you, you don't go, you, you go to their homes. You don't expect the white children to come into your house. And because, and I mean, they're kind of like they're thinking like the old maid culture, the black women are not supposed, are supposed to be subservient, so they go to the household and there's servants of these. See, I'm saying this is like a hard conversation for a lot of people to have. And... She's like, well, no, they come to my home because that's what children do. They come to the home of the piano teacher. And so they're like, wait a minute. You're a black woman who graduated from college, Howard University. You teach piano to white children, and you teach them Mozart, and you teach them in your own home. Holy Christ. Wow. 
they went ballistic on this poor woman, and she had to fight as hard as I did to stop herself from getting drugged too. And in the end, she had to take some small quantities of drugs. But they were out to get her just like they also declared her incompetent. There's wow. nothing incompetent in this woman. Hello. But she was a strong, confident, motivated black woman. Articulate, knowledgeable, but she was different than what they thought she should be. And so I mean, they do but the thing is, they can do they do this kind of stuff every day to blacks and Hispanics. But we don't allow but but you know, we you you know, so I have to be I, I, I've been, you know, I, I was up at um, speaking in Boston uh, about two weekends ago, and I, I took the opportunity of saying, because I want to acknowledge that, you know, I'm not the only one they're doing this to, that they tried to do it to. And in my book, you, you, you will remember that I, that I talk about, about the other women at Carswell. But, but it's a hideous story of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. No, this is this, this. The, the statistics is overwhelming how blacks and Hispanics they overpopulate the prison industry, and yet you know I think it's still majority of the population is white Anglo-Saxon, but yet until you get involved with the prison system or, or the court system, you you don't really know what's going on. Yeah, that's right. Sure. And it's and and let me just tell you for all of you guys who think you want to be law and order, you know, for all the listeners out there, uh, I always thought that I was law and order too <laughs> until I went in and one of every 100 adult Americans are in prison every single day according to the US Bureau of Census the Census Bureau okay that's not a a prison rights figure that's a bureau of census a census bureau figure Okay, one of every hundred adults, every single day of the year. We have the highest rate of incarceration in the whole world. And you would think that, oh, these prisoners, must there must be a lot of murders, there must be a lot of rapes. No. Non-violent. Violent crimes are 16%. The rest of it, most of it's drug crimes. And drug crimes for, like, marijuana. It's not even heroin or method, methamphetamines or anything like that. It, it's It's just... Smoking pot, and then you get to, you know ten years in prison, and you, we've got to wonder you know it's and it's a, it's a business it's corporate it's a, oh, yeah. our corporation. Yeah. So Big and I'm not That's I'm not saying is. yeah and I'm not saying that that people should you know be violent or or that there shouldn't be times when people do go to prison, but I think we're sending a lot of people to prison who don't need to be there. Who who have you know who are not guilty of anything that would you know they they were you know the uh, anyway I I have very strong feel I've discovered very strong feelings about that kind of stuff. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I was saying this the other night. The CIA, uh, you know, they get the drugs on the streets. Um, you know, that's yeah. why they like it all being illegal because they make money on it, and then they go and arrest the people who buy it. And they fill up the prisons, and it's just one big happy little business for them, and it's sickening. <laughs> it is a business. It's 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 a big uh, it's big on Wall Street. It's it's a big uh, it's a big industry on Wall Street, and it's a growth industry. And when they build prisons, they guarantee that you know they'll have like a ninety percent full capacity rate. How do it's, they guarantee that? <laughs> Well, they go out and they, you know, they they guarantee that they, you know, they can't, they'll have arrests and they'll have convictions and they'll just keep it filled up. So it's it's really, you know, we've we've got to change our whole philosophy about about people and and government and, you know, think about what happens if one of it every time you go for a job, and you have to tell whether you're not you've commit whether you've been convicted of a crime, what happens if you've been convicted of a crime? You can't get a job. So you're saying right. now that one of every 100 Americans, adult Americans, is going to be shut out of the job market? I mean, you, we can't we can't do this anymore. We've got to change everything that we're everything about our society is is just we, we've we, we've gone the wrong way. Amen. Jose, uh, did you have uh, some specific uh, questions? 
Such yeah, I'm sorry, history. Jose, that I interrupted you. No, no, she could continue with, with her story. I, I'm fascinated about everything that's going on and anything new that she's working on. Okay, well, Jose, tell me, you, you had something that you wanted to talk about when you came on, too, right? Yeah, those, the, yeah, no, no, those, I want to hear that. I want to hear that. The, that was just a, uh, a, 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 couple, a, couple, a couple of issues. But no, I, I want to hear what those are. No, because you... You know, I know, I know all the situations that you went through with with the prison and the false accusations, and and there's um, a company because I I've done a lot of research into FMR technology and now EEGs. I did a show with uh, uh, Catherine Albrecht, and then she introduced me to the EEG technology, and it's like a form of FMR technology, and it's the it's titled the Mind Reading Machine. And oh my it, and goodness! It, and it's developed by uh, V R I T S Veritas Scientific Company, and mm-hmm. now that and and I've I've been I've been staying this for a while now. It, it goes the article goes in in July, uh, 2012. That memories and thoughts are private, or at least they they used to be. A new company, the Veritas. Scientific is developing technology that promises to peek into a person's brain to reveal some of their secrets. Oh my the last God. realm of privacy is your mind, so says the CEO. Oh, but and then he goes on and on how how they 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 tested it on the military, so the military <gasps> could go in into Afghanistan and then see who's friendly, who's not, and it's just. I've been tracking this technology for a long time, and and it could have been used a lot of ways to prevent the Iraq War. It could have been used a lot of ways to to even prevent 9/11. You know, with all, with all the information that you had, the warning signs and everything that that something was imminent. Wow. Well, I I tell you that kind of technology is pretty scary. That can be like mind control stuff. You know that this uh that that James Holden's guy. Have you did you hear the stories? I'm sure you did. The, the guy in Colorado, the Batman, the, the, the excuse me, the Joker, the, who, who you know, the, the Joker guy character who, who showed up yeah. at the Batman premiere. You you did you hear that he had been uh, involved in some special uh, computer interactive video games, but they weren't games. They were like um, uh, they, they 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 were very quiet about what they were, but they were not like video games. Like virtual reality. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I had heard. And they about were doing that. something, and and it was something. Um, you know, they they were very they were very oblique about as to what it was. That's that's what got me is they couldn't explain it. Or didn't want to explain. Didn't it. want to. But then this guy goes out and kills people, and I'm like, you know, wow, that's like some kind of like mind control Manchurian candidate stuff. It is. It is. You know, I think a lot of these uh, psychopath killers that uh, we see flashed in the news periodically, I think a lot of them, I think that's the deal. I do, you know, I think they get them on these medications, they're on these psycho drugs, and, oh. and then a little mind control, and they got themselves a time bomb to throw exactly. around. Exactly. Like Exactly, yeah. and you know, and you see what's happening in Afghanistan, and and you see these guys coming back and. And they're they're playing they're guinea they're guinea pigs, uh, these soldiers. I mean these these soldiers who are coming back with post traumatic stress, and and in Washington, they you know they they're they're these poor kids. I I, can, I call them kids. I know they're like men. They're they're adult strong men, and they're really tough men. But I mean for me they're they're kids. They've got their whole lives ahead of them. They shouldn't be destroyed at this stage of their lives. And in Washington, Walter Reed was running all sorts of experimental tests on post-traumatic stress. Like if you force somebody to relive the stress point over and over and over again, what would happen to them? And if they had to relive like a video game of their nightmare, and every day they had to replay that, what would happen to their mind? And I was like, oh my God, you're torturing these people. It's the worst thing you could do is to make them relive this this atrocity again and again, but this is how they're doing it, and it's like they're they're you know they're not providing medical care to these guys these veterans, 
they're providing guinea pig treatment so that Eli Lilly can test something. And yeah. that offends me. Yeah. That really bothers yeah. me. That is you what know, they're doing, when, too. When Romney and, Romney and these guys, they're, they're talking about, you know, how they want to increase defense spending, but they're not talking about soldiers. And, and I want to see veterans care. I want to see these guys get, they need help, some of these guys. And and I want to see something done for them on a personal level. And, and, it does, and they don't count. They're cannon fodder. Once they come home, they're used up and they're thrown away. And they don't even want to pay them pensions. They don't want to, you know, they, they're like, oh, that's welfare. We don't want to give them anything. Well, these guys need it. Their marriages are often wrecked. Their, 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 their children, you know, they don't know their children anymore. They've got post-traumatic stress. They need some help, you know. So I, I think, and, but we don't have anything for them. But we've got money for Lockheed Martin. Boy, Northrop Grumman is going to make a killing. And all over Washington... When you go into the metro system, um, you see these big advertisements for, you know, the latest military equipment that they want the Pentagon to buy. Oh, it'll only cost you $400 billion for this program. Gee, this will create 20,000 20, jobs in, you know, Montana. And I'm like, you know what? That's corporate welfare. And I would get tired of hearing about these politicians who don't want to give anything to the middle class they don't want to give anything to the people, but, but their cronies in the military-industrial complex are top priority for getting funds. That's right. Uh, Susan and uh, Jose, we've got uh, a caller, uh, so I'll take this call, and uh, then I'd really like, uh, Susan, for you to uh, go through your, your entire ordeal. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so people will, uh, you know... We, we're on a new network now, and I think we, we have uh, some new listeners who might need okay. to hear this. So, sure, okay. But let's take this call. We've got, uh, he's going under the name of One Angry Jew, and he's in PA. Um, all right, well, One Angry Jew, uh, you're on Late Night in the Midlands. Hi, Susan. I watched a video of yours maybe two weeks ago. Oh, thank you. And probably the same presentation, if you're going to do that now, that I watched uh, two weeks ago, and I've got questions from after watching that video. Well, uh, I, me, I'd love to have your questions, and I don't want to repeat something you've already heard two weeks ago. <laughs> well, I don't anyway, think you're go gonna, ahead. I'm go gonna, ahead. I'm going to ask you specific questions that I don't okay. think it's going to be a repeat of anything that you've said. I, I came away from the video slightly confused on several points. It got the impression, and you tell me if I'm wrong, I got the impression that the... 19 quote unquote hijackers were patsies. Uh, if there were really 19 hijackers, yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe, and, and let me clarify what I'm saying with, let me preface what I'm saying with 9 11 is probably the most important focal point in American history. I because agree. Because I knew that day, and I told my girlfriend at that time, that the rights of Americans were going to be uh, stolen at a pace that no one has ever seen before. And I was telling her that that morning. I knew that that was going to be the result of it. I didn't know that there was uh, something wrong with the government story until, I guess, about 2006 when I found out the Building 7 fell. Yes. And I had to ask myself, wait a minute. I didn't really ask the question of why did it fall, the fact that it did fall that day was enough for me. What really was entered my mind was, why didn't I know about it? And what I found out was yeah. that most people don't know. If you have, I, I've sat outside eating dinner with friends, and I said, here, watch this. And I'll stop people as they walk by, and I'll ask them how many high-rise uh, buildings fell on the day of 9-11, and they'll always say two. One out of 100 might tell me three. They know about Building 7, but most people don't. Yeah, 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 that's so, right. So I got the impression that, that you thought the hijackers were patsies, and I think they were patsies too. I don't even believe that they were on the planes that hit the buildings. I believe those airplanes flew off somewhere when the uh, the they landed and, and grounded every other airplane in the sky, and I think they killed those people. And, and here's the first question. Do you f- feel that the government is capable of doing exactly what I just said, which was 
flying, uh, yes, airplanes hit those buildings, but I think they were military aircraft made to look like civilian aircraft. And I believe they were flown by wire because I'm a pilot. I don't believe that you could fly a plane at that altitude at that speed and hit those buildings. Do you believe that the government is capable of taking those people who were on the original aircraft, including the quote-unquote hijackers, landing them somewhere and disposing of them? That's question one. Okay. Well, I have um, a slight variation on what you said. The answer is yes. Do I believe the government was capable of hijacking? I'll, I'll rephrase it a little bit. Uh, for to fit how my how I see the scenario because I can see how you see the scenario, I see the scenario as follows: that they were definitely patsies, and the government gave the GPS coordinates to the hijackers, and uh, I believe that they probably uh, let's just say there were 19 hijackers. I would say probably uh, 12 to 15 of them were fake. 12 to 15 of them were plants. This is my estimation. And the other four were originals. And so, for example, we see all the time, since 9-11, we've seen the FBI uh, put together 600, now think about this, 600 phony staged terrorist attacks since 9-11, all of it created by the FBI. They recruit them provide technical assistance, provide funding, give them what they need. And I think that they probably, they could have just easily got somebody off the Internet or maybe they were, you know, some some kid somewhere, set it up. You mean like the kid that they just set up who was claimed to have uh, tried to set up a bomb in front of the Federal Reserve? Yeah, there you go. The 21-year-old, wet-behind-the-ears kid who was over here. And they're always students. Yes. Okay, and yeah. and I assume that there's a reason for that within, I'm going to call it, I'm going to go back to the movie, which is one of my favorite, Three Days of the Condor. Yes. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it, Yeah. and I always tell people to watch that movie because I, love I, really, Days of the Condor. I really do believe this is how the intelligence agencies operate. And if you want to see an intelligence agency within the intelligence agency, Three Days of the Condor is a uh, is not as far fetched a story. In fact, I don't even think it's far fetched at all. I think it happens. But is that the profile that the? And I don't know if you would know this because I imagine that no, no, I, I think Tom that's it. I think that's exactly what they did. Was they they found some kids? They you see. I think I believe that they had already decided. I I know from my own experience that they had already decided that if they could have a maximum destruction of this of the World Trade Center, they could they would try to try to create a justification for war with Iraq. They'd already decided that six months before nine eleven happened. Right, but I don't and think they, they wanted to have maximum destruction and I'll tell you why. FEMA was in town, well, they'll tell you that they weren't, but Giuliani in his testimony to the the nine eleven commission will tell you that Absolutely, FEMA was in town, and that's where Giuliani and his crew that had left the bunker in Building 7, the yeah. emergency management bunker, that's where they went. They went to Pier 42, where FEMA was in town. And even yeah. the London 7-7 bombings, they had drills going on that exact morning in the exact tube stations that were bombed. And the gentleman in charge of the 7-7 uh, drills that morning, Peter uh, Peter Powers was his name, and he will tell you that uh, the hairs on the back of his neck stood up when he realized he had chosen the exact same locations that the terrorists chose. And his people, who were first responders, went from drill to real life in five minutes' time, just like the FEMA people did when they were in New York. They had been yeah, in New York right. they were there for prior. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. And to me, uh, well, well, well. Let me let me just finish giving you my scenario because I think it makes a lot. Of, I think it. It, um, it, 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 I agree with with the whole 9/11 community on a lot of stuff, and then I, I do think that there were airplanes, and a lot of people say no, no, there weren't airplanes. No, but and, I'm saying and, there were airplanes, but I don't okay. believe that even with the coordinates, because unless they had military GPS, there's a difference yeah, between what the military go. uses and what the civilian uh, aircrafts use, and it's the difference in pointing. 
they they do that. They and that what do they do is they jam the frequencies, they muddy the frequencies of the civilian GPS system, so that you couldn't use it to uh, deliver a, a warhead or something with accuracy. That's why the military has much better GPS than we do. I believe those planes were military. I don't believe that there was even a soul aboard that air, any of those two aircraft. That hit well, well the here's centers. here's what I would say to you. Um, are they capable of doing it? Yes. Yes, they are. Absolutely. I totally believe they are. And and I guess where I do disagree with you, and I do believe there were airplanes, and I know some people but don't but believe there were any. I'm there oh, were no, no. Airplanes. But I, I, I'm just I'm saying for the audience that may be listening to this, um, you and I both agree that there were airplanes, and some people don't even think that there were. Um, but I think that if there were hijackers, and if the government wants to insist on that story, then the only way that there could have been hijackers is is if 15 of the 19 were all set up and they were they were FBI or 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 not FBI agents but yeah, they were, they but were like Mo, like the Mohammed Atta types and of course the the problem for Mohammed Atta was that he spoke to his father the day after 911 so he didn't die on that, on the airplane. Well, so. I, I would want you to talk more about that because that's the first time I've heard that. But oh, Muhammad no, he Atta, did. He, Muhammad Atta called his father in Saudi Arabia the day after 9/11 and said that he was not dead and he was going into hiding. Which is but, which kind of lends credibility to what I just said. I don't believe yeah. that any of those people were on the aircraft. Muhammad Atta started out his day in Maine, not in Boston. Yeah. Which. Which makes no sense to me. If, if you had an important job interview in Boston at eight something in the morning, you would not be sleeping soundly in Maine the night before. Certainly not if you were going to rely on our commuter airlines to get you there on time. Absolutely, I agree and yet with this you. This man supposedly started his day in Maine, and that's the pictures that we saw. We saw the pictures of him in mm-hmm. khakis going through security, and I love when people say, "Well, we didn't really have good security then." But uh, what I've heard is that every one of those hijackers tripped off these uh, metal detectors. So they were wanded. So yes. ultimately, you would think that Muhammad Atta would have and been And they wanted. got the box right. cutters through security even though they were wanded. Right. I don't believe that. I mean, <laughs> what? I don't believe that. These are the, these are the same wands Ooh. that are used by the Secret Service when people go through the metal detectors to see a presidential event, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so if, if these are good enough to protect the President of the United States, then I would think that ostensibly they would be good enough to uh, protect the uh, aviation system as well. And, you're be- and we're supposed to believe that 19, ho- 19 different individuals all got them through. All yeah. got through, and they were all wanted, and every single one of them made it through security with box cutters. <laughs> In their, right, but, in their, but, on but their here's persons. the thing. Here's the other question that I, that I have, and I know I'm flipping around, but uh, Colonel yeah. Anthony Schaefer with the Operation Able Danger identified the names of all these hijackers, all the so-called hijackers, and he gave that information to the Clinton White House, who told him to go away. I did not hear you mention that in the YouTube video that I watched. Uh, you gave, well, that's gave, because I, I, um, I don't know. It, it's like you. I tend to think of the ho- of the hijackers as being uh, recruited assets who were trained by the American government, supervised by the American government, and if they were engaged in any sort of conspiracy, uh, it wasn't a conspiracy like like they were acting independently. The only way that a conspiracy would have been possible is if they were carrying it out at the supervision of the U.S. And if there were if there were nineteen hijackers, fifteen of them were really assets who were being put into place by the FBI and the CIA, planted to supervise the recruits who were drawn off the internet uh, because they wanted to make you know ha ha jihad against the United States, like this kid who wanted to put a bomb in front of the Federal Reserve. Um, yeah. And or like the, then they tend to be very young, very yeah. unstable, very passionate, and and they and it's and they, they, if they were left alone, they wouldn't do anything on their own. But they're getting but but the FBI is going out and trying to create it to create it, and I think that's the problem that we're having um, with terrorism. Well, I think what the FBI, the FBI is, is making it up. 
I think what the FBI is doing is they're creating a made-up story and a made-up function for these impressionable kids, 21 years old, and saying, hey, you know, yeah. you're going to help us with our national security, and here's how you're going to do it. You're going to test it for us. You wouldn't think that that would fly anymore. However, I can, if you ever heard of the Phil Henry radio show, he can tell you that he does voices and he does all his guests, but he still does not have any problem finding people that will call his show and have no idea that he is every guest and every caller. Does and they will what? argue with him. So he tells they, them he, flat minute, out. He does what? Uh, what does uh, he Phil, do? Phil Henry is a radio personality. that has been around for many, many years. And Phil uh, early on discovered that it was hard to get callers and good callers to call, so he made up his own. And what he does is he has his own characters. He's got, I don't know, maybe 75 to 80 of them. They can oh all talk God. to each other. He does female voices as far as well as uh, foreign voices. He does all sorts of different voices, and they all talk to each other. The only thing is they can't talk at the same time. But he's so good, it's very hard to tell. But he will tell people on his radio show that all the voices were done by me. Uh, Bobby Dooley was done by me. This character was done by me. But it does not stop him from finding people who call up the radio show to argue with the ridiculous caller who has a ridiculous <laughs> thing to say and constantly calls up. So he's never th there's never a shortage of patsies or people who get who yeah. fall for it. In other words, I, right. I think it's a scam. It's sort of like going around uh, the, the the old uh, uh, Tin Men thing where they uh, sold everybody with, with brick houses. They sold them aluminum siding so that they could have uh, good uh, insulation. There's never a, a shortage. Of, who has said it? There's ne there, uh, never give a sucker an even break, and there's always going to be some chump who's going who, who's, um, going to fall for something. And so I think that's exactly what you've got. They they find these impressionable people, and then exploit them. I, I and, and and it's no different than wasn't the uh, the one that supposedly was going to set off. Uh, explosives in the car in Times Square. Wasn't that one also a young kid uh, going yeah. to school? So yeah. there's a and there's a pattern here. And even when you show people the pattern, though, you're going to get the p people who will tell you, "Oh no, no, that's not true. That our government doesn't do that." Yeah, yeah, exactly. In Portland, here's a really good example. Portland, Oregon, uh, had a different agenda for the, the federal government went in and said that they wanted. Uh, Oregon to spend money creating a uh, a terrorism response plan, and Portland, Oregon was like, "Look, we are a small state. We don't have terrorism here. We have better things to use our money for. This is a dumb idea, and we're we're, we're going to put our money into education. They're very progressive. They're very. You know, we're going to put money into the metro system, and we're going to do things that are good for our society." So the FBI went out and said, "Oh." You don't think you could have a terrorism problem. So what they did was they recruited a, a young 21-year-old Somali refugee and who was very you know, unstable, young, just young. They found him off the Internet, and they got him to uh, place a phony car bomb outside the Christmas tree of uh, like, like two years ago. And so here's yeah. this. You know, and so they made it sound like, you know, okay, Portland, now you better cough up that money for that we wanted you to spend on terrorism. And so instead of paying for schools and teacher salaries, because Oregon is is actually pretty poor, they don't have a lot of money. They have tim they have money from timber sales, but timber sales have been lower, and because of the environmental protection and such, so they they're actually hurting for schools. So they were like, well, you know, we don't want to spend six hundred thousand dollars for a stupid terrorism plan. Now they have. Well, it. Let me let me throw out another example of a young kid who's on an aircraft from I forget uh, which European country it was, the underwear bomber. Yes. But let me. And and what age was he? He was in his early twenties. Uh huh. Going to school on a student Poor visa. Kid. In fact, they all had Poor student kid. visas, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Here's the question I've got, because I ask common sense questions. Everybody says that I'm a conspiracy theorist, but really what I am is a conspiracy questioner. <laughs> and here's my, here's my question. And Good for you. It's, it's not, a question, not a question for a woman, although I, a woman could answer this question. 
If your testicles are on fire, how is it possible to sit in a seat as calm as any other day and not scream? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. How could uh, that exactly. is, is, he, is he drugged? Was he given? Uh, it, was he somehow uh, given? Some, how is that possible? I, I can't even fathom how that would be possible. For for several hours. Yeah. I oh. mean, this is like, you know, it's not even we don't like know what 15 happened or... to him. We don't know what happened to him after he was taken off the plane. We we do know that... Oh, oh and, and let me, because let me, I am a conspiracy questioner, but I'm going to give you an answer to something, a question you haven't asked. Okay. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you and to the people who are listening. I'm going to save all your lives, possibly, and here's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> do not ever fly in the morning. How come? Why? Well, go down through the list of all of the events that have happened in the last 30, 40 years that have uh, happened with aviation or anything else, any of these terror, quote-unquote terrorist events. When? What time of day do they happen? Always in the morning. 9/11, Always in the morning. Yeah. First thing in the morning. Uh, oh. Federal building, first thing in the morning. The... Uh, Crotch bomber. He was about eleven o'clock. Was uh, when he landed in Detroit. The shoe bomber, I believe, was in the morning. Uh, all of them. All of these things happen in the morning. In, in fact, I, I guess when did I didn't even look uh, think to look it up. But when did this uh, supposed terrorist activity in, that the Federal Reserve in New York happen? What time of day was that? Well, nine o'clock in the morning. Is that right? Well, no, I mean the the, yeah. the the World Trade Center. Well, no, I'm saying the no. Federal Reserve. What time did the Federal Reserve? Oh, was oh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I, I would I'm go not sure up. about that offhand, but I, I'm willing to bet it was probably sometime in the morning. Okay. There, there, now, was, there was a recent did, attack that? that was at 9.30 in the morning. Which one? The one for the Federal Reserve? Well, the, I I don't know. The thing is that they, they, they try to do it during rush hour. No, that's not why they do it. I'm okay, why, do, they, why do you think they do it? Why waste a good news day and have your false flag event in the afternoon where you can have the morning news, the after, the mid-morning, the noon news, the afternoon news, <laughs> the evening news, the lady news, go. There and you hit go. every single news cycle to get the major, to get the most out of your terror uh, scenario? Yeah, because there what you is go. The point, what is the point of these terror scenarios? It is to get as many tongues wagging, as many people saying, see, 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 we told you so, this is the way it is, we we need this Patriot Act, we need this NDAA, we need all these things. And yeah. that is, and it, so it always happens in the morning, because why waste a good news day? I never, I'm a pilot, I'm a pilot, I won't fly in the morning. I love it, I love that, whoops, that's I'll right. I'll fly in the afternoon, I'll fly in the evening, I'll fly overnight. I think that is when you are the safest in the air. <laughs> All right. Well, That's one thing we do, I want to thank you for for calling. We we've got to take a break. Um, but well, uh, put me on hold, and I may you. have more questions after I listen to what uh, Linda has to say, because I okay. had questions listening to the YouTube thing, and I'm sure I've had questions that I didn't remember that I will probably remember when you uh, say what you're going to say. Sounds good. All right, will do. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, Susan and uh, Jose, hang on with me as well. Uh, great call. Uh, you know, some great information. And, uh, uh, yeah, in the morning. You know, it does seem like every time something happens, it happens in the morning. And, and that would make sense. They want to hit the morning news, the afternoon, the evening. <laughs> you know, I've never really given it that kind of thought. So uh, great call. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Susan Lindauer is my guest. Uh, we've got her linked up over on LateNightInTheMidlands.com. And uh, if you want to get your hands on her book, I have it here. Uh, fascinating book, lots of great information in it. Extreme Prejudice, the terrifying story of the Patriot Act and the cover-ups of 9-11 in Iraq. And uh, she's going to take us through that story when we return. I'm Michael Vera. This is Late Night in the Midlands. And we'll be back in just a few moments. Is there proof of God's existence in our government's records? Author Jose Calazzo brings his years of research into this stunning question to light in 
God does exist. No more nuclear testing and more. Touching on little-known government projects such as the Remote Viewers Program and Active Auroral Research Program, Colazzo has uncovered some amazing discoveries through his research and use of the Freedom of Information Act. From uncovered information on the Ark of the Covenant to connections between natural disasters and nuclear testing, experience this revealing look into our government's obscure and hidden work. Discover how new and experimental technologies may change our world forever and uncover monumental proof and answers to mankind's greatest questions in God Does Exist, No More Nuclear Testing, and more. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and facts that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal, the government lies and the government ties, and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions of times more. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about late night in the Midlands.com. Become a member and be informed. Check out Crystals TLC. Hit the Avon link to view a full line of 100% guaranteed Avon products. See and order their specialty scented long burning soy candles. And while you're at it, check out their other great products from tie dye to incense. At some point, your power may go out, and Crystal's TLC has you covered there too. I have been in the same house with others when power is out and water is not running, and let me tell you, it not only gets dark at night, but the odors become very present. That's why Crystal's TLC's unscented and scented candles are perfect to use now or keep on hand in case of an emergency. Their candles are produced especially from Crystal's TLC and come in a wide variety. You can order directly from the website at www.crystalstlc.com and bring peace of mind and beauty into your life. www.crystalstlc.com Is it possible to read a person's thoughts? Can we implant thoughts also? Is there evidence of the existence of God? Does USGS records show increases in earthquakes due to nuclear testing? Author Jose Colazzo says yes, and he has the proof in his three books titled America's New Slavery, FMRI Technology, America's New Slavery Behind the Scenes and Update, God Does Exist, No More Nuclear Testing, and much more. Researched under the Freedom of Information Act and other sources, Jose Colazzo has the proof to most of his claims and is investigating others. You can get copies of his books on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or www.xlibris.com. That's www.xlibris.com. Or you can click the book banner on the main page right next to the chat room on www.latenightinthemidlands.com. Get your copy now. You're listening to the LNM Radio Network. The LNM Radio Network covers it all with great shows like Tough Reality, Paranormal Perception, The Hurricane Hour, Angels Lighthouse, and of course our very own. Late Night in the Midlands. So when you think of a network that takes an interest in everything, think of a network that covers everything. The LNM Radio Network, exploring the truth and exposing the lies day and night. For the full lineup on times and dates of the shows we generate, go to www.latenightinthemidlands.com and click the On Air Schedule tab at the top of the website. We want to stick around and continue to bring you the best guests and the best shows from around the globe with the best information. And we cannot do it without your support. So please, spread our content as much as you can and donate on the website by going to www.latenightinthemidlands.com and on the right side of the page you will see the donate buttons and you can rest assured that every penny you donate goes to help the LNM Radio Network stay on the air and expose the world 
one true one true one okay return we have and again my guest susan lynn dower and her book extreme prejudice the terrifying story of the patriot act and the cover-ups of 9-11 in iraq <clears throat> and uh you know we had a great call uh and uh you know it, it's it's good to see that some people are awake but we still know that there's a lot out there i know there is because i have people who will still argue with me and say no it's not true. Our government wouldn't do this to us, so they are doing this to us, and they have been. And uh, until we get a majority of the population awake, you know, you keep letting them get away with this, and they're going to continue to do it, and and that's where we're at. So uh, Susan is going to take us through her ordeal, um, and, you know, God bless her um, having to go through something like that and and even more so to be able to come out of it alive, no doubt. Uh, 347-989-1012. Uh, we will take calls shortly. I wanted to get through her story, uh, uh, and then we'll go to phone lines if anybody has any questions. And uh, I also want to uh, let people know that we now have added the uh, Blog Talk radio chat room uh, to the late night in the Midlands com website. Uh, so there is a tab up top. And if you click on that tab, I don't know if you're one of those who enjoys the blog talk chat more than the L&M chat. Well, we've got them both open, but uh, if you click that tab up top, blog talk radio chat, that will take you uh, into the blog talk radio chat room right from the website. Uh, So we have installed that for you, uh, for those of you who prefer. So uh, let's get back to it, but uh, please get over to LateNightInTheMidlands.com, become a member, be informed, inform others, very, very important. And uh, Susan and Jose, we are back. And Susan, I would really like um, for you, I I know your story, um, but there's people out there who might not. And I know that there's people, I like to call sheeple, who... uh, who will argue that this just is impossible, and you're living proof that it is. So if you would, uh, take us right from the beginning. How did you get involved in the first place, and then what led to all the events? Well, you know, I, I want to say something. Like at the beginning of the show, I pointed out this was the fir- this is the first presidential election that I have not been under indictment on the Patriot Act since the year 2000, uh, 2000. 2000, yeah, and 2004, 2008, because the truth matters so much that some politicians will stop at nothing to destroy it. They are manipulating national security to try to to try to scare you into giving up your rights, particularly. Um, they're trying to beef up their budgets, expand their bureaucracy, and really and expand the authority of their bureaucracy so that we are moving away from freedom more and more to you know, a more of a fascist America. And it's not about whether you're going to be shopping this Christmas. Uh, it's about whether you've got the freedom, whether the government sees you as a, as a threat and whether it re- regards your freedom as a threat. And you know what we've seen Obama do with the NDAA, that was just a year ago. That was in January. You know, the, the Patriot Act allows secret charges, secret evidence, secret grand jury testimony. I, I'm, I'm an activist. I, I'm articulate. I know how to fight. I, I'm a for, I, I, this all started because I was a CIA asset who covered Iraq and Libya at the United Nations. I was inside the Iraqi embassy and inside the Libya house. And I was supervised by the CIA and the Defense Intelligence Agency. And I know how to create situations. And I know, and this is very important, I know how to manage and maneuver when hostile actions are being taken against me. And I'm... You know, I'm a good fighter. I'm trained in how to fight this kind of stuff. And yet, the government of the United States of America, not Saddam's government in Baghdad, not Libya's government, but the United States government, was so corrupt that even though I'm a good street fighter and I can battle with the best of them, 
I was it wasn't that I was completely outmanned. They refused to give me a hearing. They refused to give me any due process at all so that I would have the capability just to go into a courtroom and stand up and say you're 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 full of crap. This is ridiculous. They just simply said we will not allow the constitution to hold. And that's what people can't even understand because if they could do this to me, I know how to stand up to these people. What are they going to do to you? You are not nearly as afraid as you should be. I was locked up on Carswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth, Texas for a year. And and, and part of that was at uh, the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York as well at the very end. But I was it was the most terrifying experience of my entire life. I was accused of acting as an Iraqi agent um, on the, allegedly on the grounds that I took a trip to Baghdad one year before the war when Iraq was sent about to send um, uh, a team of diplomats to New York to hold formal talks uh, on the weapons inspections. And what people didn't know was that I had my team, I on behalf of my team, um, had done the preliminary talks on the weapons inspections. And this is the way it should be. The CIA made sure that the Iraqis were going to give us every single thing we wanted. They were not leaving anything to chance, nor should they have. That is entirely legitimate, which is why they wouldn't let me go into court and say it. Um, but I took a trip to I, – I, we did the negotiations, and then I flew to Baghdad to make sure that Baghdad would do what they – would agree to what they had agreed to in, Was- in New York. See, we needed Baghdad to confirm that they were going to go with what they agreed to in New York. And that was entirely responsible. Now, we knew, my team knew, that there would be no weapons of mass destruction in Baghdad. We never thought that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. We laughed at you. Seriously. We were like, who are these bimbos? Who are these bimbo pundits? who keeps saying there are WMDs in Baghdad. That is a nonsense. Who is making up these stories? We, it was not originating from us. We were the intelligence covering Iraq, and we were saying there are no weapons of mass destruction. Hello, you idiots, don't do this. There are no t- Saddam has no ties to terrorism, and there are no illegal weapons, and that's just, and it's foolish to pretend there are. So, you know, we had really great intelligence. We had a peace option on the table that was incredibly good. Um, uh, the peace option uh, was weapons inspections, cooperation with anti-terrorism, including sending the FBI into Baghdad with authorization to conduct terrorism investigations and make arrests, and um, contracts for American corporations in telecommunications, healthcare, hospital equipment, pharmaceuticals. Baghdad agreed to buy one million American manufactured automobiles every year for ten years. And I laughed when he said that when the diplomat told me that and he said, What? How about twenty years? Is is ten years not enough? And I said, No, <laughs> ten years will be fine. But but I mean I was you know, but they, they were gonna give us preferential contracts on oil everything you wanted in the middle of that knowing and the white because my cousin was the chief of staff to George Bush i was debriefing the white house continuously as this unfolded so they were totally knowledgeable of everything going on and they uh all of a sudden in april of 2001 i was summoned to deliver a message and that was that the united states was seeking intelligence on airplane hijacking conspiracies with a, a suspected target of the World Trade Center. And we were demanding that Iraq had to give us any intelligence on airplane hijacking conspiracies that they discovered. See? Because airplane hijackings are associated with the Arabs. And so they needed a protocol for a terrorism attack that would fit the kind of thing that Arab governments had done in the past or had supported in the past. And that's why they used it. It was very convenient. It had to be somewhat believable. Um, and, uh, you know, whether they, whether they're, if um, it is my opinion that the airplanes were like a magician's trick, 
all eyes were all the all the the public eyes were on the left hand which was the airplanes flying into the World Trade Center but the real action was the controlled demolition on the right hand and 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 there is no way that the that that uh, an airplane striking a building would cause the entire building to collapse that defies all logic how could anybody be so stupid as to, no so, sorry to your audience i don't want to say stupid but it is not rational it is there is not logic involved in that and how do you account for the 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 firefighters these are experts firefighters are knowledgeable about explosions that is one mm-hmm. thing that they're expected to know because it's part of their job to hear to understand what is causing a fire to 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 get out of control. So they're going to they they are reliable as a source. And you have, you know, hundreds of them saying the same things that they're hearing this popping sound as they're as they're racing to get out of the building before it collapses on top of them. See? So, you know, you know, anyway, so uh do I believe that the government could have done this? And and everyone's like they they want they're they're like you're saying they don't want to believe that that they that Washington that anybody would be so horribly evil malevolent malicious to cause this sort of suffering and death and tragedy in order to justify a war that you never had to fight at all but that's what they did. Yeah. And then when they decided they were going to cover it up when the war went badly, they didn't even have the courage to stand by their own war. You know, that just makes me furious. They had to blame me for the war. And I because I was the asset and you all heard them do it. You know, everybody, you know, even, you know, even the, the idiots who watched Diane Sawyer on on ABC News and and the the the, the bimbos on CNN and Fox News you all heard them say that it was bad intelligence that resulted in the war. And yet, we were the ones saying, we were the ones who got it all right. And we were it. We were the primary assets covering Baghdad. Yeah. So, so then you, the assets become the fall guys. I mean, but this is something the that they had planned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The scapegoats, uh, and, and this is something they were going to do no matter what. They wanted that war in Iraq, and they knew that by uh, the nine eleven attacks would give them good reason. It's fear mongering. They feared people into thinking, "Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, Mister Bush, we just want to be safe." Yeah, and and it's important to know that because we're going to see this happen again. Um, they uh, are desperately trying to drive us into war with Iran. And unfortunately, they got away with it once. And I believe, truly believe, that the greatest, the greatest purpose of the 9-11 community now is not only to keep, the, the truth, the keep, keep alive the truth about 9-11, but to make sure that this is not allowed to happen again. And the, our voices, our testaments, um, may be loud enough to stop some place like Israel or anybody. You know, you, it doesn't have to be Israel. You know, anybody. Any. The, the thing is that the, the the pro-Israeli factions want the war. But you know, but we are doing this to ourselves. You see what I mean? It, it's like you know, who put the bombs on in the who who did the controlled demolition? Well, they may have been Jewish, but I don't but I doubt it. I mean, it doesn't have to be they don't have to have been Israeli even if they were pro war. You know? That's yeah, very I, know. I know everybody wants to say Israel did it. You know, Israel knew about it. But that's that's different than saying they did it. And I know a lot of people are going to ask mad at me. you about that. They're going to get really too. mad at me when I say that. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that too. There, are, there are quite a few out there who believe that Israel is actually calling the shots um, in this whole game. I'll call it. Uh, you don't think so? Oh, I think so. I think so. I think they're trying to drive us into war with Iran. Uh, but I think that we are abdicating 
our own responsibility for 9-11. And I think that we have to be very careful about that, trying to say that a foreigner did this to us. I've got really bad news for you. We did it to us. We yeah. did this. Now, I, when I say we, people get really, really, really angry. They're like, no, no, don't say that. We didn't do it. Yeah, we did. <laughs> And it may have been people, I mean, I'm laughing, but it's like I'm t- crying. We yeah, did I, I to ourselves. We made the choice. We are responsible. And we can make different choices. We have got to make different choices. And did Israel have something to do? Israel knew about 9-11 in detail. And they they supported the actions of maximizing destruction so that they could go to the, they could, everybody could guarantee the war. But we've got to stop abdicating our responsibilities because that's where we're getting into trouble. If 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 it if it happens on our watch, we're to blame. There's oh, I two, agree. There are two scenarios that that I seen a video. I think it was posted on Michael's website, and uh, and someone emailed it to me. I don't know if it was Alfred Webb or someone. They emailed it, and and they said that the security teams in the airports, at least two of them. Were, were had ties to the Israeli intelligence agency. Did you hear anything about that? I, I think, yes, yes. And I think that Israeli intelligence was fully informed about what was happening. We do know that um, my, my own CIA handler on the morning of 9-11 said that uh, a Mossad team had filmed, had, had a video camera and filmed the uh the 911 uh the the first airplane striking the towers and when george bush talked about seeing video of the of the pilot be, uh striking the the airplane striking the towers before he goes into the classroom remember that there's a famous conversation that he has right after 911 he admitted that be, that before he went into that classroom he had seen video footage of the first airplane striking the tower. So when my cousin Andy Card leaned down and whispered in his ear about the second airplane striking the towers, he already had no knowledge of the first attack, even though he'd been in the classroom, because he'd seen it. That video was filmed by the Mossad, and I believe that, and I think that it does implicate Israel in the knowledge, foreknowledge of 9-11. But the thing is, everybody knew about it. This was, You were the, you, sorry, no offense, but you guys, the public, were the only people who didn't know about it. We all knew about it. We were, the buzz was strong throughout the summer. I remember my, my uh, neighbors were moving in in July, and there was a moving van outside, and I remember talking to my defense intelligence handler on the phone about 9/11, and saying it, we didn't call it 9/11. We said, you know, the airplane, the the the, the, the airplane attack that's going to strike the World Trade Center. There's going to be an airplane attack on the World Trade Center. That's how we described it: the airplane attack on the World Trade Center. And and in and I I remember saying I remember vividly saying to him, oh, there's a moving van outside my neighbor's house. Imagine if they knew what we were talking about right now. They'd go back where they came from. They wouldn't want to live next door to me. <laughs> but, but I mean, but that's true. You know, we we knew, everybody knew, everybody. And it was, it was, it was just, you know, oh, God, Ugh. you know, and, yeah. and we, you know, and and it's like it's like if we were to pretend, like in in the future, if there's an attack that leads us into war with Iran, um, that uh, that uh, you know we're going to pretend that we're shocked, just shocked, that they, that somebody pulled a false flag operation on us. And if I we're think shocked, that's what they're going to pull. Mm-hmm. Then that's what they're going to pull. That's that's how they'll get it going. Uh, these a false flag, and. You know, all the people who pay attention to the fake lamestream media will fall for it again and say, oh, we got to get them for that and not look at the facts. And it's a shame. Yeah, but that's why we're important. That's why this continues to be important, because it puts in context what what is happening. And 
you know uh, w- what we are doing to ourselves and and pointing fingers at I mean I know that a lot of people are going to be real they do get really mad at me when I say this because Israel did have advanced knowledge of it so did we so did everybody uh the Iraqis the, the, the diplomats from Baghdad said, Susan, you know, you know more about this attack than anybody. You keep you, all all the buzz, and this is very telling. They said that, you know, all the chatter that's going around about this attack originates with you, meaning with the United States. All of it comes from us here. And we're putting out the word about it over there, but we are the source of all the chatter ourselves. See? Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. space uh will say to women you know you're you're supposed to be in the ghetto you're not supposed to be a middle class woman there there was there was one woman who was a piano teacher a black woman and they asked her well you know you're black i'm telling you the truth now this is going to hurt if there's anybody who's listening to this who's like who's afraid of having racial conversations this will upset you but this is this is about race um, they they said to her uh, she's a black piano teacher. She went to, graduated from Howard University. Very strong, capable woman. Very cap- competent. And they said, uh, well, of course you're black, so you teach jazz, right? And she said, yes, I teach jazz. I also teach Mozart and Chopin and you know all the other classical music. And they said, well, uh, you think you're capable of that? And she said, well, of course. Wow. wow, yeah. You think you're capable of that, of teaching Mozart? Sure. Chopin, yes. And they said, well, you teach black children this? Do you think black children can learn this? And they're like, and she's like, well, of course they can. And I also teach white children. You know, I don't discriminate. I teach all children. Oh, my heavens. A black woman teaching white children Mozart? They, when it, this went, it went to a higher level of incompetence. And then the, the kicker. You teach them in the white children's homes. They were very worried that a black woman was teaching a white child, Mozart. And so they're like, well, you, you don't go, you, you go to their homes. You don't expect the white children to come into your house. And because, and I mean, it's kind of like they're thinking like the old maid culture, the black women are not supposed, are supposed to be subservient, so they go to the household and there's servants of these. See, I'm saying this is like a hard conversation for a lot of people to have. And, She's like, well, no, they come to my home because that's what children do. They come to the home of the piano teacher. And so they're like, wait a minute. You're a black woman who graduated from college, Howard University. You teach piano to white children, and you teach them Mozart, and you teach them in your own home. Holy Christ. Wow. They went ballistic on this poor woman, and she had to fight as hard as I did to stop herself from getting drugged too. And in the end, she had to take some small quantities of drugs. But they were out to get her just like, they also declared her incompetent. There's nothing incompetent in this woman. Hello. But she was a strong, confident, motivated. Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I say all the the TV news is just a bunch of propaganda. It's really owned by um, the New World Order is what we call them. And, uh, you know, so I think where we're getting the real news uh, is on the alternative news across the Internet. Um, I think that uh, this Internet has been a huge blessing. Yeah, there's still some propagandists who use the Internet, too, but... uh, 
But that's where you're going to get the truth. And uh, Susan, I, I have a friend who's uh, been on the line with us. And before, I want you to start from the beginning with your whole story. Um, but first, I'd like to bring Jose Colazo on because I know that he wanted to talk to you. Uh, he's a good friend and uh, he does yeah. a lot of work in uh, fMRI technology. So, uh, Jose Colazo, welcome to Late Night in the Midlands. Hello, Michael. Hello, Susan. How are you? Hi. Hey there. Good. Thank you. How's everybody doing? We're good. doing How great. Good, thank you. Uh, very interesting. Your, 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 you know, I give you credit for everything that that you went through for our country and and. Of Black woman, articulate, knowledgeable, but she was different than what they thought she should be, and so I mean they do. But the thing is. They can do, they do this kind of stuff every day to blacks and Hispanics, but we don't allow. But but you know we you, you know so I have to be I, I I've been you know I I was up at um, speaking in Boston uh, about two weekends ago, and I I took the opportunity of saying because I want to acknowledge that you know I'm not the only one they're doing this to that they tried to do it to. And in my book, you 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 will remember that I that I talk about about the other women at Carswell, but but it's a hideous story of what they're doing. You know, the, 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 the statistics is overwhelming. How blacks and Hispanics they overpopulate the prison industry, and yet you know I think it's still majority of the population is white Anglo-Saxon, but yet. Until you get involved with the prison system or, or the court system, you you don't really know what's going on. Yeah, that's right. Sure. And it's and and let me just tell you, for all of you guys who think you want to be law and order, you know, for all the listeners out there, uh, I I'm very uh, I read your book and it was, thank you. It has a lot of information of things that were going on that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, it's it's a it's a frightening kind of story, I think. Um, and one of the things that I want to say is that, and and, and please, this this is like a reverse racism thing. Don't don't get this the wrong way. Um, this kind of thing happens to African Americans and Hispanics all the time. What was extraordinary was that it happened to a white blonde woman. But I was the second non Arab American ever indicted on the Patriot Act. The Arabs are getting hit with this a lot. And the abuses of women at Carswell Prison, if I can digress for a minute, uh, what they do to African, to black women and Hispanic women are so ugly and hideous. And it's just de rigueur that they're not supposed to stand up and fight back. And the kind of women that they're attacking are not... Um, are, are tend to be mostly middle class women, and they're like they're, they're, they're these these idiots in at Carswell Prison uh, on the on Carswell Air Force.